The time is just gone 9.35 a.m. And uh, with the uh, Cricket uh, T20 World Cup that is taking place, uh, we have learned about South African wicketkeeper batsman Quinton de Kock, who chose not to kneel and uh, also chose to withdraw from his side's T20 World Cup match against the West Indies. And uh, the key issue here is about uh, taking the knee and uh, a gesture calling for racial equality and uh, against uh, racism. For reaction, we joined on the line this morning by Dr. Seth Cooper, uh, founding member with Steve Biko with, uh, with Black Consciousness. Dr. Seth Cooper, good morning to you, sir. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Emiat. Yes, uh, Dr. Cooper, just looking at this, taking the knee now, we see it's become an international practice. We see it with uh, football, we see it with soccer right across the entire world. We see it with many other sports. And now it's been introduced with the T20 World Cup that is taking place uh, as we speak. Uh, Quentin de Kock uh, under the radar in the spotlight for not taking the knee. Now, this is obviously is a gesture. Some politicians call it gesture politics. But uh, just your reaction to this decision that was taken by Quentin de Kock not to take the knee. Well, look, uh, Inia, there are a few issues. Number one is that all of us uh, claim and we uh, state that we support our constitutional democracy. The preamble to our constitution is very clear about uh, what we are about. And what some of the commentators have done is relied on one aspect say, of freedom of belief or freedom of speech to justify uh, certain things. Now, we all know that cricket, a team sport, not an individual sport, a team sport, unlike boxing or even tennis, and uh, it requires a team to be one in what they do. Even a nod, uh, a, gest uh, a physical gesture or a frown or something is understood by each team. Now, to get to that place, you need the camaraderie. And cricket has not been happy. We've known it. The cricket bosses have been denying this, but the hearings that have taken place clearly show a huge divide. I mean, some of the things revealed there are so shocking. Uh, they happened to little kids where the, the blatant racism was there. Now, the new uh, Cricket South Africa board or council um, confronted this when the whole world was doing the taking the knee that our country where we've experienced the most virulent form of racism known to humanity for a for an ongoing period of time we have this divergence it's very unfortunate that cricket board did not communicate appropriately with the players, which they seem to have done uh, last night. And so today, Quinton has issued a statement saying, look, I come from a, I've got, uh, you know, half-brothers who are so-called colored, half-siblings who are so-called colored, et cetera, et cetera. And that he, he's not racist, but he doesn't want to be called a racist. It hurts him. Uh, he just didn't get um, why this should happen, and now it's been explained. It's very emotional for him, but he apologizes for any misconception. Um, now, all of that could have been done earlier. It's just badly managed. And one, you've got to blame um, the uh, Cricket South Africa authorities because they didn't uh, engage with their players and telling them why this should happen. But perhaps they also knew that there was... Um, persons who are resistant to this. Now, if you're representing the country, there's no way you cannot stand up when 
uh, and be silent when the flag is hoisted. You cannot mm. not support the national anthem, whatever you may think about little bits of it. You know, it is just not on. It's unpatriotic. So how can you be chosen for a national team if you don't believe in the country? So those are some of the issues. And you're getting all these commentators in there who want to come with their own uh, exceptionalism, but it's my right, etc. You see, my rights are important, but I cannot infringe on your right in asserting my right. And if you believe you're, a, you know, whatever you believe, in, if you harbor racist sentiment, it's one thing. But when you express it in the public space, then you must expect to come back because our country is so racist and we can't deny that. It is a terribly unfortunate set of circumstances to have happened. It's about time that Cricket South Africa grew up, manned up. To their responsibilities and did not hide racists. We've, we, you know, we know in the management there's still people who, who should not be there because of their past uh, actions. We've not heard them uh, express remorse for it. <coughs> so I'll give you a very simple example. If you were tortured under a party and the torturer now is holding forth as a great proponent of this country, but hasn't apologized to you for torturing you. How would you look at that torture? Mm. So those are well, some definitely. of the things that... In fact, yeah. uh, you know, so, uh, after this interview, we're going to be talking with uh, a family member of Ahmed Timor, and uh, this is exactly yeah. the point that you are making, you know, uh, mm. Dr. Cooper. But the key issue here, and as you mentioned, that uh, Cricket South Africa obviously needs to take responsibility for what has happened because of the poor communication. And we know cricket being a team sport, and we're not talking about South Africa only at this point in time. This is a World Cup. This is a world stage. And it's mm. unfortunate where we've seen an incident like this take place. Sure, sure. And look, it was it's also significant that it was a match against the West Indies, right? And every team, you know, Every team, whether they're from the north or the south, has been showing solidarity. You know, symbolism is so important in here. That's why people have, for instance, a flag. They have a national anthem. They have particular names like the Protean. You know, those are symbols to bring people together. And if you're part of that, your individual view you can express, but not when you are so representing a, a, a country. And how does it look where all those countries, from New Zealand through to England, from Afghanistan through to Zimbabwe, are doing this? And we, the one country that still has naked racism, we appear to have uh, this kind of disjunct, you know. So it's a it's it's a it's a sorry state of affairs, um, but we we need to learn from this so that we can build bridges, we can continue the task of um, reconciling ourselves to this country, its warts and its promise. But if we don't do that. And we continue with our own little uh, individual view, which is very important. But I can express this, you see, as myself. But if I'm representing the country, I have to be very careful how I put something forward. I cannot be standing there and putting a view that is not officially the country's position. So Cricket South Africa is the uniter of our cricket, but we've seen it. Province after province, the racism, the people who get pushed into positions of authority, training, and the captaincies and so on previously, you've seen that. So now they're dealing with it, they're coming to terms with it, and let's allow them that space uh, to make amends so that this does not repeat itself. This World Cup experience, hopefully, is a 
uh, Rubicon moment for them and for all of us, and so that we can not have this kind of expression. And it's also mm-hmm. tragic that young people harbor any such sentiment. We shouldn't, you know, anybody under 40 who really has a deep chauvinist, racist views, that it shouldn't be there. Because where have you grown up all this while? You know, it shouldn't be there. It simply is uh, uh, something that is abnormal, if you like. Well, Dr. Cooper, thank you very much for that and for your time with us this morning. We do appreciate, as always, my, you taking time out and talking to us here at Salam Media. My pleasure. Dr. Seth Cooper on the Quentin de Kock saga regarding taking the knee or not taking the knee, the refusal to take the knee. And uh, with that, uh, we headed for 9.46 a.m. We're going to go for a break. We come back and uh, we'll be focusing on uh, the late Ahmed Timor 50 years later. Looking to get your kick? 